Hello, I'm Keith Horner. I'm Professor of Oral Maxillofacial Imaging here at the Dental School. What I'm going to do now is just go through this radiograph, this panoramic radiograph, to show you the anatomy and how I would approach interpretation of the image. I'll be pointing with the uh, cursor here to help you along. So when I see a panoramic radiograph for the first time, to do the reporting, I would always first of all start with the periodontal bone levels, which you should be able to identify fairly easily as you go around. I will always tend to go around in a clockwise direction. That's easy. I would then look at the crowns of the teeth to look for dental caries. Again, the anatomy of these is fairly straightforward and you should be able to do that without too much difficulty. Then I would go around the roots of the teeth, particularly the periapical regions of the roots. Again, you should be able to identify the roots of teeth at this stage in the course. Uh, if not, it's a bit worrying. So we go around like that always in clockwise direction, from upper right of the patient down to lower right. That's easy. But when you've got a big radiograph like this, you do need to look at the anatomy elsewhere. You have a duty to report the image, and that includes all the structures included in the image. So where would we start? Let's look at the mandible first of all. So look for the condyle if it's on the image. You can see the condylar head here, it goes up to the coronoid process, which is hard to identify because it's superimposed on the maxilla. But nonetheless, here is the condylar head going down to the angle of the mandible. We can follow the lower border around to the other side of the patient. Notice the thick cortex that you see here. That's normal for an adult. We follow that up to the contralateral condyle here and across to the coronoid, which again is difficult to see but we can then follow it down to the external oblique bridge and then to the teeth. So you've gone round in a rather odd circle, but you've looked at the whole mandible. You'll notice in there, you can just see the inferior dental canal here and you can see it here. It becomes much more indistinct on this patient as we move further forward. The maxilla is far more complex to look at. What you'll notice probably first of all is if you look in the middle line you'll see a radiopaque structure coming down, that is the nasal septum, that's the middle line, which may not be absolutely in the middle. You'll also see horizontal lines, in this case two, and these represent the hard palate and the floor of the nose. Sometimes they appear as one line, but you'll see those and the nasal septum producing a kind of cross shape. In the nasal septum region you can see on either side lines here which represent the nasal cavity. You've got a little round shape there which is the inferior concha and one on the other side and the black bit you see, the dark area, is the airway, is air, air is radius. Moving more distally you will see here a line which is the orbit. So I will go around that, not expecting to find anything abnormal but at least you know what you're looking at. Again on the other side this is the orbit. Everything below that and above the roots of the teeth is going to be where the maxillary antrum is. That varies in size in different patients, but on here I can follow the floor of the maxillary sinus here, going around and going right back to here, and that's the posterior wall of the antrum. The roof of the antrum is the floor of the orbit. When people do this, they often go up here but that's the zygomatic process of the maxilla. It is not the back of the maxillary antrum. So the antrum goes back to here. I do the same on the other side. I go around like that. Here's the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Posterior to the antrum is a little V-shaped radiolucency, one on both sides, which is the um, pterygoid maxillary fissure. Going back to the zygomatic process of the maxilla, you can follow that this back, just follow this line here, which is the zygoma, going back into the zygomatic arch, which is just here. This is the zygomatic arch. Articular eminence of the temporal mandibular joint is this little bulge, going back here. So you're following the lines that you can see in the maxilla and making sure you can understand what each of those is. The other side is obviously meant to be symmetrical, but it won't be quite symmetrical, but you should be able to identify the same structures here. Here's the zygomatic process. You follow this back. Zygomatic arch here and the articular remnants. Above the condyle is the fossa into which the uh, condyle sits normally. 
And just behind that, there's a little radiolucency, which is the external auditory meatus. It's your ear hole, if you want to put it simply. We can see one on the other side here. Pretty much covered the maxilla. There are only a few other things to look at here. You will see in some patients, not all, a spiky radiopacity coming down. This is the styloid process coming down from the base of skull. You can see it also on the other side, they're not quite so big. At the very back, you will see some parts of the cervical spine, but on most images we take in the hospital, we will exclude that area, but you may see it on some radiographs. Down below the mandible, you will see a bony structure here, which is the hyoid bone. This has long arms coming out distally like that. This is the shape of the arch of the uh, hyoid bone, which is um, magnified really on this radiograph. You see it on the other side as well. Beyond that, we're really looking at other soft tissue shadows. Down here, for example, we see this little radiopacity hooking up, which is the epiglottis. See it on the other side here. We can follow this up as the back of the tongue, but then it becomes joined on to the um, soft palate, which is here. The airway shows up as a radiolucency, and that line there is the back of the airway, so it's the pharyngeal wall posteriorly. I think that just about covers what you should be looking at. But the main thing to do is to go around in a systematic way, starting with the teeth and working out to look at the larger anatomy. Everyone has their own system. You make your own system if you want, but generally a good idea is to go around in clockwise direction in ever-increasing circles.